I really, 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 really didn't get to this point in my career on like charisma or cuteness or by accident. The marriage between sales and branding is very real on the internet and most people are one or the other. You got your perspective. I just wanna be happy, don't you wanna be happy? Hey everybody, it's Gary Vaynerchuk, back with an audio experience episode. This one's super fun for me. Uh, as many of you know, I've been building up my text community, uh, 212-931-5731 for the kids at home, uh, and uh, did a fun little thing where I kind of blasted out to the community of like, I get into a very like Santa Claus mode once in a while where I just want to do random stuff. I think surprise and delight, serendipity, chance is such a exciting part of life, uh, and so, one day, I don't even recall where I was probably, well, I probably, no question was flying or doing something that wasn't in the office because I wouldn't have time for it. And I said, somebody's gonna get flown or in this case, trained up to the <laughs> office and be on the podcast and we'll see what happens. And uh, that is exactly what's happened here. And so uh, we, we are here. Uh, Dustin had a lot of technical difficulties. So that was a fun seven minute awkward situation while I had to take out some business fires. And I really appreciate Teresa you sitting there with your friends nice and calm. So let's get into the episode. So the, the real punchline was questions. I see you're very prepared. I see paper, which excites me. <laughs> yes, um, yeah. Why don't you tell the Vayner Nation who you are and how, how this all happened from your perspective? I'd be happy to. Tell me that story. I'm excited. Uh, well, I'm Teresa Stover and with me here I have Larry Davis, um, Sean Fitzpatrick, and, and my husband Rick Stover. And um, I guess back in October, um, Sean had let me know um, I'm a big podcast fan. I have a kid that goes to Pittsburgh, so I'm got four to five hour drives often. So he turned me on to you. I started listening, started following, started doing everything. And I tweeted that um, I am a female owner of a company that it's was started by my father who was an immigrant, a son of an immigrant, excuse me. Um, we have multi-generational um, impact. So things that I thought kind of related to what you talk a lot about. And I was lucky enough to get picked However, I didn't know for about 48 hours. Really? Because, yes, we had, um, I have three kids, we had a crazy weekend with sports, and my oldest daughter, who's a pit, kept trying to call me to tell me, she didn't want me to do it, she didn't want to do it over text, and I was blowing her off hard. And so everybody who's listening, so, you know, I sent it out on text, the community's quite large, I had told everybody to use a hashtag, tell me their story, uh, Teresa's story is very good, and much like most of you, you know a lot about me, so every reply on Twitter was quite good. You know, I'm gonna help you by the Jets, let's talk about sports cards, like every button is getting pushed, and like, to be very honest, and I'll continue to do Surprise and Delight my whole life, it is all serendipity. It is just wild serendipity. Like, of course something catches your eye to make the decision, but it's much more in the subconscious. Like, I'm not clicking accounts, or there's no like data being thrown at it. It is like me making a subjective call, and so, and the way I do it is then I reply to that person because it's done on Twitter, so what's easy for me when I do this is I reply to that person, CC my team on it, and then go on my merry way, and then one day randomly that person shows up, and that's what was happening. So I reply to you on Twitter, but you're so crazy, you don't see it, your daughter sees it, she, but she wants to deliver the news, so here you are so busy, you're not even answering your own daughter, which by the way, I love and respect. Well, we're by at the way, a football you game for my over, son. Like, immediately. Like, the, fact, <laughs> like, the fact that you're at that place where like if she's not saying 911 or emergency, you're like, yeah, I'll catch up with her later. I just love that to begin with, but keep going. Well, so we were at my son's football game and she kept calling so I and Rick aunt is like I, I gotta get the call I'm like put the phone down you know we're, we're here to watch Eli and he gets it Eli she tells, Manning is your son <laughs> no Eli Got Stover it. Oh, unfortunately yeah. shout out Eli. <laughs> Keep going. so anyhow we get the news and then of course I completely ignore Eli's game and look at my phone as I'd hope not to do but it was for a very good and exciting reason so you actually picked up the phone she tells you and then you go look at well your phone? no he did oh I he didn't. told you he didn't he's like you won the contest and I was like what are you talking about oh my gosh so then of course and I had gotten a million tweets and you know all, all kinds of stuff. So my phone had blown up, but I have all my notifications turned off certain Smart. weekends and things. So um, yeah, so a day or so later, I figured it out. And of course, now we're here. That's awesome. Yeah. When, did, when was it? It was like October. Yeah, yeah October. October. Cool. So, so yeah. here we are. So what do you want to do with this time? Well, um, what I'd love to do is tell a little bit about my family's business. Please. And then... Um, you know, the reason Larry's here, yes. Sean, of course, is why 
You he's the whole reason nephew. why we're here, and of course, he's my nephew. And Rick, um, anyhow, I'd love to tell a little bit about the company and then open up to questions for you, if that's okay. I'm here for you. Okay, great. Um, so um, I mentioned Larry's our marketing director. He took over and started working with us about six months ago. He has a background in retail and has spent his entire career in marketing. He's made an immediate impact since joining the company, which is great. And what kind of company is it? We are a home improvement company, home so um, exterior home improvement, roofing, siding, windows, doors, gutters, and we to also end, do bath. To the end consumer? Yes. Understood. Um, Sean um, is joined the company two years ago in sales. He's risen from new kid selling over a million in his first year to our number two salesperson overall, selling 1.7 million in, in 2019, so he's killing it. And he is a salesperson, since you're going to consumer, is yeah. doing what? Closing deals, so there's 30 of us. That are coming from your your outbound calling? And well, inbound, because of the reputation we have. We, so we you're brand, calls, right, so you're third said. generation, it sounds like, or like. 40 years in business. 40, nonetheless, 40 years, you have a brand locally, so yeah. your inbound inquiries need to be converted? Yeah. Among other things, yeah. Are you cold outreaching? In sales, or is it is no, it no, more? No. Going and it's all so the website or the phone call or whatever right. other top of the funnel behavior you're doing comes, and then you're converting inquiry or questions into potential business. Yep. Understood. Right. So my dad um, started the company um, a million years ago, as we said, 1980. Um, but a little bit about Can him. Can 1980 not be a million years ago? <laughs> <laughs> like I'm yeah. old enough to remember 1980 pretty clearly. Um, but the Big interesting. Shout out to Dover, New Jersey, yeah. a kindergarten school that I was in in 1980. Go ahead. Um, so the interesting thing about him, which I think is part of why we got here, is his. Uh, he was the fifth child of an Irish American family. His generation was the first generation to be born here of his family. So Understood. his dad was an engineer. Came here because there was no work right um so he um went to went to uh, high school graduated was married at 19 was in college and had myself my sister by the time he was 21 right. and was doing roofing and siding work on the side old school shit yes yep. and um realized that maybe college wasn't what he needed to do he needed to provide for his family like right. so he started subcontracting ended up starting his own business it's cool so, um, you know, part of why, or we, the whole reason why the company is where it is today is because my dad is a man of integrity. All the decisions he made through the years were made because he wanted to, he reputation. named the company after himself and, and reputation. So I know the game. Yes. So he, um, I can't say enough great things about him. He was involved until about 11 years ago when Rick and I um, bought, out, bought out his company. Is your dad alive? He is. That's He's awesome. retired. Is he listening to this podcast right now? He will be Good. when awesome. I send it to him. What's his name? <laughs> Pete Fitzpatrick. Pete, great fucking job. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. So one thing that my dad instinctively knew how to do was to provide great customer service, um, along with all the other great things that he did. And um, even as a young child, I knew that. I felt connected to the business. Um, cool. I was the oldest. I was always at his side. I would be there for, he'd take me to afternoon appointments. I was under the desk. I would try to sneak in. If he said, I can't go to an appointment, I'd try to sneak in the back of his truck. I'd That's always cool. get in trouble. So I've always felt really connected to the business. However, I didn't join the business except for small roles I did in college, which I gave out flyers. I would call back his appointments, do things like that, but I didn't actually join the business full-fledged until just under four years ago. Interesting. Yes, um, um, I came on to help in recruiting. Now Rick, on the other hand, um, my husband, got involved 18 years ago, and he um, left a job in banking, took the leap to the family business, and he's worked in various roles, working his way up to GM, until we bought the business 11 years ago. Very cool. So I understand everything so far. Yeah, so fast forward to now, we have 110 employees, we do over 30 million in sales from all the work we talked about. Yep. All of our work has a lifetime warranty. We take great pride in the company and our culture. This is, and just from my continued context, this is the service provider of these things, right? You don't you don't sell any branded items, like you don't have a gutter with your company's name no. on it. You're the service provider. Yep. Yeah. I understand, keep going. So um, we have great, and how regional is it? Like it's Delaware, Delaware like Valley. So Delaware Valley. we cover four states, four counties in Pennsylvania, most of Delaware, part of Maryland, part of Jersey. I understand. Um, but uh, let's see. So my goal is to get your help on our marketing. Our overall marketing strategy that we are using is a traditional strategy: print, direct mail, commercials, Google AdWords. Um, we recently dipped our our toe into the Facebook pool last month. Um, 
prior to that, though, and well, in October, Sean and I started using your philosophy, which is we started really trying to ramp up our social media. So we're now on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube. We were already on Facebook and YouTube. Um, we actually, you're on it in a more thoughtful, like you're taking it more seriously. We took a try. I guess they took a shot at it a few years back. It happens all the time. And didn't see any results, didn't think it was yep. working, Makes and sense. abandoned it. Makes sense. So now we're really giving it a try. Yep. Um, we've, of Why? course, well, a couple reasons. Um, I, and this is really where I want to have these guys talk as well. Please. Um, I really feel like. Well, our customer base tends to skew a little bit older. Makes so, sense. Um, especially for our bath products. Makes sense. Um, I also think because we didn't see any results, we they, it was abandoned. So it, everyone saw it as like a fun, nice to have, but not necessary. I understand. So um, we've, of course, seen a huge increase in engagement since we started. Um, it's It's gone great. But what we're... Here to find out is how do you um, connect that to since the there's right um, since there's no way to track anything but engagement. Well, there, that's not true. Since the strategy was set up to only track engagement, you're at struggling with the notion of does it lead to sales? Well, I'm not um, necessarily because you, because you intuitively <laughs> believe it because you're the son of a father who built a business on word of mouth and social is predicated on the same nuances. Right. Same right. nuances, not the same. Yeah. Same nuances. Right. You know, very easy for Pops back in the day. Brr, hello? Is this, what, what was his name again? For, uh, Pete. Pete, I apologize. Hello? Hello? Is this you, Pete? Yeah, I'm Mr. Thompson on Delaware Street in Delaware. My friend Rick told me you're awesome. Can you work here? Very easy for him to know word of mouth works. When you don't have a human on the other side of that lead that came in, you don't know if that was print or direct mail or radio or television or social or Google AdWords unless you strategize it to do that. It's very easy for you to post something right now on Facebook that creates a, that you can create a separate Google phone number, a Google voice number. We do those things. The, the ability to track it is, if well, you do those. Well, we don't do those, it for social. Yeah, we don't, we don't do it for social. We have a lot of curious. If you did every piece of content on Facebook and it had a phone number on it at the end, not even, if, not even throwing the right hook, just having the phone number there, you would then be able to see the data on which phone numbers came in from that number and which one of those converted into his 1.7 in sales. Mm -hmm. It's actually shockingly exciting to me. Most people, to your point, and by the way, 99.7% of businesses, let alone small businesses, and by the way, for everybody listening, 30 is insane, it's a real fucking business, but I'm talking corporate talk, small businesses, mm -hmm. don't set it up to be able to measure it. So you're saying that we... It's the most trackable thing. Because okay. it's happening on the internet. It just have you have to have a stra if you're an organization that is desperate to see results on every dollar in the short term, which at some level everybody is. Mm -hmm. It all depends on how much money you are. How, like you have the luxury of thinking long term. So I'm sure back to the history of this business by listening, you're okay with it truly paying out for real three years from now because mm -hmm. you're not looking to flip it tomorrow, right? right? So. Yeah, I mean, I just gave you the direct example of how easy it is to measure everything. You could have a separate phone number for YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. Like you could, like it's so measurable. It's actually uncomfortable. Okay. It's far. We, we do, yeah, we do do that. We what what's hard for us numbers guys to to get wrap around our brain is is the the specific posts that are really well the jabs so to speak and you know the jabs aren't ads obviously. The right? good news so. is the jabs, and I appreciate using my terminology, so I'm <laughs> flattered in theory can be so inexpensive, mm -hmm. they cost less than the stamps you do on your direct mail. So it depends on how you're quantifying the cost against your jabs. The other thing that is very challenging is for you guys to really get to the numbers game, mm -hmm. you have to turn off the other advertising and suffocate advertising to see what's working and what's not. My, my belief is that you're making assumptions on things you've done historically that, and, you're putting them, and you're putting the new stuff through a scrutiny that you haven't done for the other stuff because it's been accepted. Yeah. All the media is pretty well uh, measured. I yep. mean, we have a phone number for every newspaper. We're in yep. every different newspaper. So every newspaper is a different phone number. And That's our, awesome. You know, our paid ads on Facebook have specific phone numbers and specific I see. Numbers. So you're, you're more having a scrutiny around the organic content. The organic. And I guess the, the question I wrestle with is, Teresa's content is hugely engaging, so we get lots of- Her, the human? 
or what well, she makes. What I'm posting. Right. Yeah, you the posting. human? So we're getting lots of jobs. We're getting lots of you know likes and shares. Are you getting qualitative feedback? Like, are you getting comments? On yeah. some, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But they, they're not necessarily related to roofing, right? So roofing, <laughs> roofing is a pretty tough subject to get social engagement around. I mean, it's like, you can post videos about mold growing on your roof, and it's not going to generate a lot of response. But that's no, but a key issue in, in roofing. Yeah, and to your point, like I'd rather get zero comments and likes and get two customers from a video I make about a moldy roof on Facebook than to do a ton of things that get all the comments in the world and lead to nothing. To your point, also, all that stuff that's being said and all that engagement is actually probably leading to business. It just might be hidden, and that's yeah. what you're trying to tackle. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's that's the big thing, I think, for us in general. Can I give you a great recommendation that works for this scenario all the time? Please. Why don't you guys make a decision on costs on the jabs and organic? <clears throat> make one number financially that appeases the numbers guys and appeases the jabs and gray people and move on your merry way. The things I've always done for brand and long term, if I decide I'm gonna spend $47,000 on it and I need zero ROI on return, I've already won because I'm not having debates with the people that are looking at the numbers. Mm -hmm. We've both all collectively agreed that we're gonna make this $47,000 investment and we're not gonna be emotional about that and as long as we stay within how we quantify that, away we go and thus you're spending no mind time to debate. You've made an investment in brand. It could be zero. I'm unemotional about that, but what it does is it puts in a frame where you don't have to worry about the organic ROI of it. In a world where you may have people that believe in brand or the subtleties of it or believe intuitively it's working versus ones that want to put a quantifiable number against it. And when 47, and if it's 25,000, as long as like, if you just take your overall marketing mix and decide to take five points out for branding, and that becomes the budget, then there's no tension in the system and everyone can go on their merry way unless the gray people want a lot more money than you're willing to allocate. And I think maybe even measuring, so the, the, the posts that Teresa does don't really cost us anything other than her time. My time. That's Which really is the, the best money. fucking business of all time. Yeah. I, I, would, I would argue then, if that's true, why are we even debating it if the cost is zero? Part of it is maybe could we do it better so it does okay. more tie into our better? business? Is there ways to and to is there ways to tie in what we do, not just you know tie our traditional with the social? Forget about traditional. I think it's more about what you're trying to actually accomplish, mm -hmm. right? Like I think it's less passion about traditional or digital. I th I think it's more about how do we, you know, there's many questions here. One, do you want to do that? or are you enjoying, this is now a human question, let alone an executive question. You gotta mold the human and the executive in a family business. Like, well, I'm enjoying doing it. My concern is we do, yeah, is our customers concern? do skew older, okay. and they're not gonna be around forever. And I am concerned that as millennials, are, they're becoming the, more of the homeowners. We are, I, my concern is we're not engaging them the same way we are the, the boomer generation. And I think this is a great way to potentially accomplish something that way, I well, don't know. I, I would say it probably has nuances of both. What I would argue is that, first of all, Facebook is more effective right now for me with 55 to 75 than direct mail and newspaper for my dad's business and most of the businesses that are SMBs that I care about. So A, the greatest thing you should definitely do, like there's a lot of conversations going on here, let's break them down. The A-B test against your newspaper strategy is really interesting to me. Facebook done, here's why Facebook in theory, if you have the creative capabilities, will beat newspaper in the dynamic that we just talked out. No matter how low the cost of that newspaper ad in 100 different places with the phone number is, Facebook's advantage is two things. In the eight, you know, and we, we spend about a billion in media, so this is coming from that context, and we look at it. We don't, you know, when we work with big brands, we're still going local as hell, right? What you definitely need to do if you're doing that much print is test the same exact uh, demo against newspaper. If that newspaper ad is costing you $800, $1,200, running eight to $1,200 against a piece of, cre what, what the reason Facebook always wins, when, done, when both are done perfect, is that in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, I can make a reference to the Giants and the Jets and the Eagles and that can hit three demos where on Facebook at 140 bucks each against those fan bases, whereas in print, you'll have to pick one of them. 
It's the creative flexibility of Facebook and then my general opinion that there's more consumption, actually seeing it versus the print ad on page 142. That to me is probably the most interesting, if I bought the business, the marketing dollar A-B test, and by the way, though I think things skew this way at costs, it's not about is one better than the other, I just care about what something costs. Mm -hmm. My favorite ad to buy in the world is a television spot, it's called the Super Bowl, costs $6 billion. Mm -hmm. We bought three of them for clients this year, like I'm very excited about the three Super Bowl spots. That one really excites me because that's very measurable for this organization. So that's just one random thing, Um, because it does skew older. And you and by the way, a video of how to as a as the ad versus the print picture, like I know for fact that if you built a machine that got really good at local Facebook ads, it would grow your business. Having the capability of creating the content at a low enough cost is very real. There's unlimited fifteen dollar an hour creators that are, would much rather have a, even at a boring roofing company would much rather make videos then work somewhere else not making videos because they're creative. The mm-hmm. entire ecosystem of 20, 18 to 30 right now wants to be creative and so that's one thing to debate. The cost of your creative lowering it by going minimum wage in Delaware. What's Delaware's minimum wage? 12 bucks. Right. 12 bucks. There's a lot of 12 year old, tw- excuse me, a lot of, <laughs> <laughs> child labor is a great <laughs> um, There's a lot of people who are so fortunate that they can afford to or so hungry to live their passion to do to work making videos on like it they just exist. So mm-hmm. there's a lot on that. As far as the you, you build if you became me. If you became me, which who I am right now is I have a lot of young people fans of me. What would still happen if you had 5 million fans on Instagram and Facebook, you as a collective would try to understand what the ROI of that is for your business. And the reality is is that at scale, I th- I think it's a I think you doing you the way I'm hearing so far is more like salt and pepper, not the steak. Okay. There'll be some nice nuances. The reason I if you notice the cadence of my questions, if you like it, I'm already happy because then you'll do it with a different vigor that will lead to good stuff. It will. But to drive the business, you need a scalable model to take advantage of these platforms, not to rely on a personal brand who's not going direct at the, I'll give you an example. My content now leads to less business for VaynerMedia than my content for Wine Library led when I'm a hundred trillion times bigger. Why? Because in 2008, when I was making a wine video, it was so direct to the business I was in that it led to business. Mm -hmm. Whereas now, the 99% of my audience is not VaynerMedia clientele. Got it? Yes, yeah. Now, do I believe that you're gonna inspire some other female entrepreneur in Delaware on a post? Yes, I do. And do I feel like on next Thursday, if she needs a new roof or whatever else you're selling, bathroom, like that you get into consideration? Yes, I do. There will be business. But if we're talking about scalable, A, by the time you get to a size as big as me, that's real time and work and talent. And B, I don't want you to miss out on the actual opportunity in social, which is some of the stuff I led to on the newspaper A-B test that I just talked about. So advertising is paramount or in where you see the application here. Yeah, if I was, in the, if I was the fifth family member to join or a teammate, I would say, hey, I love your guy's spirit, but I'd be okay if we did no organic and we ran paid against everything. I would rather you run paid against female entrepreneurs in Delaware against your content for 100 bucks to amplify top of the funnel and brand than to just leave it at organic. Okay. Mainly because the ads are so underpriced. Because they're gonna get more expensive. Facebook was uncomfortably a good deal five years ago. Uncomfortably. Yeah. It's starting to get to where Google is, which is get appropriately priced. I built on Google AdWords. I bought every word, I, word, I spent five cents a click. Well, so that was one of the questions we did want to find out from you. Is it's the 1980s? <laughs> that's right. Well, you know, um, what you would suggest? What platforms you would suggest for a business like LinkedIn. ours? Your company should be doing ten pieces of content a day on LinkedIn. That is how to. LinkedIn. And again, content versus paid advertising. I mean, I, paid. on LinkedIn. No, saying- no, that's funny, and I'm glad. We're at, look, okay. LinkedIn is actually a very organic platform. So LinkedIn is kind of wild. It's one of these one places where you can have no account like you probably have now, post and actually people will see it. But somebody might see it in St. Louis. Mm-hmm. 
LinkedIn's ad product's a little expensive, but I like that you can target things. You could target specific businesses. You could look at who is using your product and have like a feel. There might be a major company only a mile from you guys and all the employees live in the surrounding suburbs. So there's a lot of strategy. Like, I'll give you one. You could target Campbell Soup's employees, right? Big company in Camden, mm-hmm. not too far from, sounds mm-hmm. like it's in your demo. That is. And then your video is like, hey, do you work at Campbell's Soup? That alone's already got you in the mix. That's the flexibility of social that print and, 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 and radio don't have. You've, you're stuck to one creative and the old world. You could have, the, the game for this is the volume of contextual creative at scale. But we really need to, like those kind of ads, you're not looking to do, hey, $99 for a month for a new bath. You know what's funny? I wouldn't be scared to play AB. And by the way, if you're cheeky about it and you have fun with it and it's a little less douchey, I think you can really get away with it. And I think their their idea from the measurability aspect is like, like I've watched your stuff forever. So like, and I like, my initial argument is like, like not only will they, sometimes people don't call the number that you put on Facebook, right? So measurability, we don't know that they're talking to their, they're seeing our stuff and then they're talking yeah. to their neighbor measuring, and then they're calling through a website. Measuring brand versus sales is, a, is the forever challenge. Yeah. When I see this scenario where there's all good intent, which is already, thank God, you know, you're, you guys are on third and fourth, fifth space. I think, I think you have a real conversation around what I said. I think if you have a sales marketing bucket and a brand marketing bucket, everybody's gonna be much happier. If you guys agree to a set number of dollars to we don't need to, like I, 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 I doubt that the two guys behind you don't believe in brand. Well, we have it, a whole branding department. Of course, so, so what needs to happen is don't blend the lines. You make one core budget and you're cruising. I've seen it a million times. I've seen the most contentious mom and daughter, father and son, family business, small businesses, executives, the most contentious scenarios where I literally laid this out and like literally a week later I get an email like, you saved our life. (laughs) We would argue all day long and now that it's just 18,000 for the year, Carol's pumped, she's gonna spend it however, like if I'm the quant and money and math guys, I say to the art or brand people, I'm like, go put it all on black, I don't give a fuck. It's like I do my T&E budget at Vayner. Once I set how much you have for travel and expenses, take a fucking rocket ship. I don't give a fuck. You have all year to spend this. You spend it. You wanna take a train? Did you take the Acela? Did you take the, I don't give a fuck. Like I don't wanna judge you along the way. Here's the macro budget, go. I don't need to micromanage you. So I think that could really work. Yeah, it makes sense. What questions do you have, Larry and Rick? So I just wanted to get back to the the degree to which the uh, hosts, whether yes. they're paid or, uh, uh, organic. Only organic on TikTok and LinkedIn yes. at this exact moment in time. Okay. Four years ago, Facebook organic, hell yes. yes. Five years ago, four years ago, he- organic Instagram, hell yes. Here's how they all start. They all start, once they hit, yes. organic is a dream. But you can't control where it goes, right? And if you have a narrow business. Then the ad product comes out and it's a dream because it's a marketplace and you bid it up and it's cheap as fuck. Then that becomes properly priced and then it becomes overpriced and it never becomes as overpriced as print, radio, and television because they set floors based on their margin. Marketplaces are fair, it's supply and demand. But that's how the market goes. Early is organic, non-controllable where you go if you're narrow, but if you're just building macro brand, great for me, I want everybody. Two, underpriced ad product. That's where Instagram stories are right now. You want to get younger? Mm-hmm. and you want to convert sales, you guys should run an ungodly amount of Instagram story ads. Instagram story. The main feed Instagram product is getting close to being properly priced. The story ads where you can swipe up and land on the mm-hmm. website, yeah. great for the guys behind you because they're gonna see the lead gen. And great for you guys because it's super underpriced. $3 CPMs in Delaware. Opening line of the videos. Hey, I just literally did it a couple hours ago in my office. Hey LA, hey, like contextual creative. Okay. So keep it contextual. Always. 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 It's why this is all happening. The reason if I were with you guys and we went to uh, Penn Station now, go back to Delaware, and an 82-year-old man would ask for a selfie, and a 13-year-old girl would ask for a selfie, and an African-American, and a Latino, and a white, is because I'm contextual across all platforms. I'm cool to 12-year-old girls on TikTok, and I'm cool for 64-year-old executives on LinkedIn. Why? Because I put different content out. 
It's still me, I'm not making it up. I just know what to talk about to the audience because that's why they would be interested. By just starting the video as, hey, are you a Campbell's employee? And they are because you used the targeting on LinkedIn, you've already got a prayer. Go drive and film it in front of that nice new Campbell's building and you're already even more contextual because they'll see the visual. It's all content. This is contextual, contextual warfare, not content warfare. Content is what everybody focuses on. The nuance under that is contextual content at scale. You need to invest in making a lot of content. Content is king and oh, the context is God. The, that's right. Did I read that and when, That's right. I appreciate <laughs> that. And when you put those two together and you have a business result, you're off to the races. Mm-hmm. Did you have more? I think that's... I have a couple quick things. Um, videos. And real quick, culture, right? So like when Joe Flacco retires, you make a head nod to Delaware football. Like, like things. Yeah. Things. Mm-hmm. Right? It's very good that you do that. I know, a lot of stuff. I got that, that's very good. Um, Videos, how important do you think they are versus pictures, or is that different on every? You can make a six second buy, it's the same way I think about length. Creative is the variable of success. Okay. I make videos that are fucking two hours long and people watch them. I have eight hour vlogs on YouTube people watch. Hmm. And then there's videos I put out that are 39 seconds and don't do well because it wasn't good enough. So the length or the format is irrelevant. Meaning video does extremely well. We all know that people enjoy it, but there's a lot of people that want to read it or pictures. Like they could all work. That has more to do with you than, it's not the format, it's the ability of one to communicate on the format. Okay. Okay, did you have any questions? I guess like personally, so I'm- You've almost watched too much content. You already know all the answers. (laughs) Yeah, well, no, so for me, so I'm in this situation kind of like what you were in with your dad. Like I'm doing our yes. hardest job. Yes. You know, I'm 25. Yes. Putting in a lot of hours. Yes. Like, and just trying to absorb. That's why I'm here. I'm absorbing everything. And yes. And I'm really lucky that they're willing to listen to me yes. a lot. And, <laughs> and, you know, go back and forth with me. That's huge. Um, but just like, so the recent main, re- like for me, what do you think the type of stuff I should be working on? And, you know, from somebody who's in a business like this. My intuition is the quicker you can get from ideology to practicality, the better it's gonna be. I think the thing that really made me successful that I always worry about when people watch me and then are in situations is it always came, everything I talk about comes from actual business results, Mm -hmm. right? And so the vulnerability, without knowing anything about you, is when you're seeing what I'm talking about, I talk about branding Mm -hmm. and marketing. I talk about building Nike, not a sales team. So when you see that and you start framing up my model, when you go enter the real world, I don't talk as much about operations and sales, which I equally do. To me, they're more commoditized than building brand. So my worry is you come in and you come in with ideology and they're like, that's cute, but what the fuck does that mean for our business? I know how to articulate that to what it means in 12 or 24 months for real and show indicators. My dad was the hardest of all. He was an immigrant that was scared to spend anything on anything. He luckily too was willing to give me a shot. I had to fucking deliver. So I mixed sales and branding. Now, it sounds like you're a really good salesman. Things like use that as leverage. Um, Like you promise them that you're gonna do two point one next year, and because of that, give me another thirty thousand to do marketing. You know what I mean? That practicality. Do you, do you see anything around the bend? Like obviously we know social media is not going away, but it, but it's, yes. it's morphed from yes. Facebook to LinkedIn to whatever. But. Are you doing any radio? No, we do TV, but not radio. You do I remnant just, television? No, we- Like cable TV and? Broadcast news broadcast. mostly. Oh, I love that, that's great. That, that excites me because I'm telling you, get, get into the, you leave here, look at each other and be like, that was nice, he was nice, that was good. Contextual, creative at scale. If you're spending TV budget, you don't, you can't imagine what your opportunity is. Once you realize what that TV product is versus YouTube and Facebook video, when you make contextual creative. So this is very simple, business terms. If, make it simple. If you're spending $1,000 to amplify that commercial and you spent $1,000 to make that commercial, let's just play, mm-hmm. that commercial's vanilla to the person on the other side. You had to be broad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, You had to. I'm you're, in it though. You're actually in it? Oh, I'm in it too. Okay, well, so now <laughs> I'm competing. excited because you guys are attractive. So it's yeah. now I know why it's converting. No, but honestly, ready for this? Literally the life I just lived. Literally, if you started the video with Wilmington, listen to us, 
right? Philly, Harrisburg, you know, like Cherry Hill, Morristown, New Jersey. We've been in the, like, when you get into that, mm-hmm. it kills. And when you realize that Facebook video and YouTube video and soon to be pre-roll on OTT platforms where you can buy it like a stock market, you, you, I'm so happy right now, I think you could sell by my excitement. Mm-hmm. You are wasting real money on television, not because it's not working, because you're like, no Gary, you're wrong, we've getting these sales. I'm like, that's mm-hmm. fine. Just like you would say to him, that's a cute ideology. I would say to you, that's cute. Now let me show you what you can do with that 80,000 bucks. Where you'll pour it, back to the analogy I said, that thousand dollars is getting you a certain amount of results on the media spend. Mm-hmm. You spent 2,000 to make it happen. I know that that same thousand on YouTube and Facebook would be better and that the content you made might cost you 2,000 because you made four videos at 500 bucks instead of one at 1,000, but I know the results would play because you made it contextual mm-hmm. and it was seen more. Mm-hmm. On the videos, quality, I mean, can you shoot them on an iPhone? Yep. You, yeah, you, you don't need. You do know that there's a YouTube pre-roll product that's based on people's search, right? You know that we can run a pre-roll YouTube video of somebody who's gonna watch an Eagles highlight on YouTube, but the Mm pre-roll is you guys because you know they live in the area and they searched roof. Yeah. They searched renovating my bathroom. I don't think we've dabbled in that. No. Mm -mm. I promise you, I know you guys very well enough. I I knew you were gonna like that, brother. You know why? Because it's 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 mixed it's mixing sales and break listen. I can put a phone number on for that particular Cherry Hill. I promise you, I promise you this, and this is a good thing to say to all four of you. I really, 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 really didn't get to this point in my career on like charisma or cuteness or by accident. The marriage between sales and branding is very real on the internet and most people are one or the other. Mm -hmm. How do you mean one or the other? One sales or? You're either all about sales Mm -hmm. or you're all about brand. That's our industry right now too. Like we, that's the world, brother. We talk our whole about industry it. is all about sales. Yeah, it's so transactional. Know, it's, it's good news. Any small business that sells something is all about sales. Mm-hmm. That's why they stay small. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. It's I very like it. real, and I say that coming from a small business. I built a business from three to sixty-five million with no money, none. We spend a little bit more. We than clearly zero. did. <laughs> I, my first year budget was eighteen thousand dollars for the year, and I did it in five years because I know what happens when you marry brand and marketing and my and, and sales and marketing. My great fortune was that the internet just happened. And so the price of email and Google search was so zero that I milked the fuck out of it. I learned that, that got into pattern recognition. That's why I invested in Facebook and Twitter and Tumblr because I knew it was email and search all over again in a new form. But this time I got smart invested in the companies, not just milked it. And that's why I am who I am now. That's why I'm never wrong. I don't talk until it's been proven. I'm not guessing on TikTok. It has a billion fucking users. May not sell roofs, but what you need to always be prepared for is maybe the way you make content on TikTok becomes the way you make content. You know, more importantly, I always get worried in a good way. That's a slang term for interested when it's super young because when it's 12, 13, 14, you suck in more grandparents than you think. So I was so right about Facebook. What I knew about Facebook in 2007 when everybody thought it was a college thing was, wait a minute, these people are posting their photos on there and their parents and grandparents want to see their photos. Mm -hmm. So, just psychology. Last question I had, sorry, and you've probably answered this already, but again, so when we're running ads though, they should be about us and our products and what we sell, but you need to try and make them hit the person you're truly talking to by you're Doing making it interesting or specificity oh, where, you know, Cam- right. hey, Camden or what, you know, Camden. Who do you like in American football, if at all? Eagles. We're Eagles fans. Yeah. Eagles. Yeah. You wearing an Eagles jersey mm-hmm. in the beginning of the video mm-hmm. and running it on Facebook against Eagle fans that live in Delaware, right. the visual already sold you more product. Mm-hmm. Money in the bank. Mm-hmm. And if you're a sellout, yep. Because you're just about business and fuck football, yeah. and the next video you wear a Giants jersey. <laughs> Respect. <laughs> context at scale. What nobody understands is this is not about spending more media dollars. This is about spending more money on content creation to create the context to lower the cost of transaction because you made it relevant. Mm-hmm. The internet lets you do that. Television, print, and radio didn't, which is why people didn't think that way. Got it? Yeah. We couldn't afford it. I ran it all too. I couldn't afford six different direct mail creatives. 
You made one because it was expensive and then you went to all the zip codes. Mm -hmm. Facebook lets you do it. Instagram lets you do it. YouTube lets you do it. The big one, and this is why it's so important to you, I want you to get good at this because we're only five years away from Hulu and Amazon Fire Stick and Netflix and the new television doing programmatic contextual buying. Mm -hmm. I can run a commercial in Amazon Fire Stick based on somebody who bought gutter equipment. Mm -hmm. When they're watching Friends on Amazon Fire Stick and live in Delaware. Guys, I'm telling you, this is not a joke. This is real ass shit. But it's the marriage of the four of you. Got it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do we have anything else before we wrap up? I did I did want to say one thing. Um, you always um, give everyone a hard time for not listening. We have been listening. We've been we've been reading your books. We've been we started doing exactly what you said. So I wanted you to know that people do listen. <laughs> I know that and I appreciate that. And more importantly, I really appreciate the four of you because this is going to be one of the best pieces of content I've ever put out because the framework of what your dynamic is is actually probably the single most important conversation of meaningful small businesses in America today. You guys are in the exact crossroads that millions of people are and and just watching the four of you in this meeting, mm-hmm. it excites me because you have to understand, your world is far more my truth than almost anything. The Sasha Group agency I have, that's the place to actually work with for everybody's listening because that's what I did. I took something small and made it bigger with not Chase and Budweiser budgets. Mm -hmm. And I know exactly how to do it. Awesome. And I, yeah, and it's practical. It's it's business. Mm -hmm. LinkedIn organic's gonna work for you, but Facebook, I'm telling you guys, you target 50 to 70 year olds. In your in those five bur- in Delaware Valley, you will dis- and you make a hundred thirteen videos yeah, on your hard. iPhone, yeah. and We're you have a fun day. Hard. Like you're gonna have a fun, and then when you open up the kimono, and you don't want to wear the Giants jersey, but like Paul in accounting is a Giants fan, and we throw him in it. Like it will work. Glenn, Glenn, yeah. Glenn. Glenn. Glenn, good news, you're in. All right, I gotta get out of here. Thank you guys. Thank, Thank you for everybody who's listening on the podcast. Listen to this four times if you run a small business doing one to fifty million dollars a year. It is the unlock. And Tristan, thanks for being here. <laughs>